here. Um, working on the refrigeration machine. Um, got a uh, big new project. Um, if I can get this thing stabilized, uh, I'll be well on my way to putting a heat pump in the house. Uh, but I got a few features that I haven't quite figured out how to work with yet. Pretty much none of them, but uh, it's a lot of fun. So this is what I got going on here. Uh, the last video, <clears throat> I was trying to explain what this liquid separator here is for the, uh, the the low side, but I thought I would just go ahead and overview the whole thing, because I forget sometimes that people don't know what the hell it is that I'm doing, um, me included. So uh, the intention here is to build a, a, a test bench. It's always been some kind of a test bench to just uh, get a handle on different methods of, uh, of, of brazing, of uh, fitting, of bending, um, and how well uh, propane refrigerant works. It's just HD5 barbecue grade propane. Um, passed through a little bit of filtration but more or less just uh, just as it were uh, as it was in the tank. Um, <clears throat> so this is a heat pump. It's a vapor compression heat pump. Uh, picks up heat there out of that coil with a fan. Discharges up here in this condenser with a fan. Uh, both come out of air conditioners as well as this uh, hermetic rotary compressor here. Um, third to half horsepower, pretty small, I think it's like 7cc displacement or something, rotary. So um, I'm just going to kind of go through the different components and, um, and explain what they do. Um, this thing is set up so that um, with with luck, I, it'll do something, it'll do something once I actually fire it up tonight, um, that it has essentially three main pressures. You have the high side pressure, as you normally would in a system, uh, that's for condensing a uh, uh, high temperature vapor out of the uh, conde uh, compressor. We have a low temperature evaporator for picking up heat. And in this case we have a medium pressure uh, column, uh, two stage compression. Ejector is the first stage and the electrically powered uh, rotary compressor is the second stage. Out of the compressor uh, we have high pressure vapor shot through this quarter inch line loop de loop up the line into the condenser uh... heat is driven off causes the vapor to condense discharges out the side here you see some of these thermocouples that i have installed in various spots uh... hopefully a little bit subcooled uh... see there's a sight glass back there as it goes back up just service valve a, uh, filter dryer comes up over the top pressure gauge there looking for any kind of pressure drop across the filter dryer and it comes on down into the ejector. Now it's not too simple in terms of um, it just being one single loop like a conventional vapor compression system. It's not just four components there's more to it than that. There's, In a sense there's two loops that are going on at the same time and the overlap occurs in the ejector and in the separator column here. So. Um, kind of a, a low pressure system going on um, uh, between the, the evaporator and the medium pressure column being compressed by the, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the ejector or expressor, expander and compressor at the same time. Uh, no moving parts, just a bunch of copper. And then on the other side we have uh, the uh, high pressure side coupled to the medium pressure side uh, between the ejector and and separator column there to the uh, you know the compressor and the, the condenser up there. <clears throat> so um, as I was saying, the liquid coming from the condenser comes down through the ejector, where it picks up some vapor off the evaporator, the low pressure side. The uh, the velocity of the liquid refrigerant coming through comes through a, a nozzle, something like this, that's actually placed down inside this this uh, kind of sort of a venturi type device. Um, gains velocity through the tip here. Uh, the pressure component from the high pressure liquid is converted into kinetic energy, velocity, and uh, creates a, a, a low pressure, high velocity but low pressure, which can draw vapor off of the, uh, the, the low pressure side. Um, the liquid refrigerant coming from the condenser and everything coming out of the primary motive nozzle it gives up some of that kinetic energy uh, that, it, that it has to the low pressure refrigerant the mixture of those two comes through this quarter inch line and then expands out through here slows down gains pressure and uh, ends up at a pressure a medium pressure somewhere between 
the high pressure side and the low pressure side. And it's closer to the low pressure side. I've only seen about 10 PSI in here. This column here, this one inch column, is a separator column. Uh, liquid can settle out there to the bottom. You get the laser pointer, see if this helps at all. So liquid can separate out into this column here, say about to that point there. And uh, what li liquid is separated out can come down through this line and then comes back up through this needle valve, adjustable needle valve. And that allows me to put a little bit of restriction between the medium pressure column and the low pressure side. Um, and uh, it is an expansion device, it's a refrigerant control. Um, hasn't been tested yet, hasn't been utilized. I've used quarter inch valves for a similar purpose, but I wanted something a little bit larger because the pressure difference between the medium pressure column and the low pressure side uh, is very small. So, um, uh, I should continue to explain in the medium pressure column, like I said, the liquid can be drawn off and go do cooling work. What vapor is produced, because you're always going to have some flash gas that's produced from the, uh, in the ejector, from the, you know, expanding refrigerant coming in from the high side, uh, and that vapor needs to be drawn back to the compressor, which goes through this goofy line that I had to make up and comes back. See a thermocouple there, comes on back through. We have this extra little quarter inch nub that's not used in this, this setup here. Um, so, that's pretty much, you know, the high side there, okay? In the low side, we also have a column. It's got some nice sight glasses. You can see through them there. You see two uh, three-eighth inch lines that terminate up there in the middle. And then this one down here uh, is just for the purpose of looking at liquid level. Now, this column does something very similar to the medium pressure column. This column is for the purpose of uh, separating low pressure liquid from low pressure vapor. Liquid is intended to be maintained somewhere around the height of this sight glass, right around where this, this line is here. See a thermocouple on the back side here that'll take a liquid temperature. So, the uh, refrigerant control feeds a little bit of liquid in here, and uh, that line terminates just the one on the right there, so you'll, I'll, I should be able to see liquid uh, spewing out there, hopefully not such a velocity that it's actually picked up by the suction line, which loops back to the ejector. So, everything in this column, everything in this coil, everything in this coil is that we all at a low pressure, relatively speaking, for the whole system. Now, this column, as I said, it does the separation just as this one does here, so vapor can be drawn off, liquid settles to the bottom. The evaporator itself, rather than just having a line going in it from, say, you know, refrigerant control and then exiting, going straight back to the compressor in a, in a simple vapor compression system. This is a flooded evaporator. And uh, by that I mean the, in, the entire inside surface of the coils are, should be more or less wetted at all times. Um, the velocity of the uh, refrigerant passing through those coils is more or less dictated by the heat carrying capacity of the refrigerant, of the liquid refrigerant, the surface area of the coil, the, you know, obviously the, the pressure, the delta T between the, the temperature of the, the coil and the uh, surrounding ambient environment, and then of course, you know, other things like, uh, you know, humidity and the amount of airflow across it. But what I'm trying to say is that because it's wetted all the time, uh, there's pretty good heat transfer uh, coefficients um, to to uh, uh, to warm the, the, uh, the saturated liquid inside and cause it to uh, immediately start to boil, ebullate. Uh, lowers the density of this uh, this mixture as a lower density than just the liquid itself. Uh, the vapor and picking up some liquid is pushed up through. This line here exits out through. That line, just like the uh, uh, refrigerant control that feeds this, terminates right there in the view of the sight glass. And I should be able to see the amount of liquid that's being carried over by this, this coil. So, let me just review. We have a line coming out of the bottom just feeding liquid off of the separator column to the coil, and then we have a line coming off the top of the coil, and then into the top, more you know, upper space here to uh, separate some of the vapor and the liquid. It, it could have terminated towards the bottom, and then there would have been some bubbling, but I want to keep the liquid in, in the bottom as calm as possible. So, hoping that's uh, that works for that. So, so again, you know, the amount of circulation that goes through there is kind of is dictated by a lot of variables. Um, 
hopefully there's enough circulation through there that uh, vapor pockets aren't being, you know, are, are quickly being uh, carried away, you know, washed away by some of the liquid and all the, the movement and all the, 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 the difference between the static head of the liquid sitting on this side and the, and the uh, you know, some more active head or whatever you want to call it, um, of the lower density vapor being, you know, drawn off and pulled off or produced or whatever you have. So, um... Uh, time will kind of tell because I've, I've messed with flooded evaporators a little bit here in the past, but nothing quite of this this nature. Usually, I have a column that's you know the full height there, but here I'm hoping to insulate these lines and actually be able to see the amount of overflow, you know, the thermosiphoning effect, uh, somewhat similar to a you know solar thermal you know water heating insulation or something, but you know with the added effect that we're actually having phase change going on in there, so it's going to be violent. So. While all that is going on, and vapor is being produced, liquid being recirculated, and vapor being produced, and that vapor and that the low pressure conditions that need to be maintained to continue the heat transfer, and pulling heat out of the uh, the environment, in this case the local air, that vapor is drawn back to the ejector, and uh, uh, that vapor is is uh, accelerated until um, it meets the uh, the liquid exiting through the primary motive nozzle and there's an exchange of energy there. The combined velocity is somewhat higher than the velocity entering from the vapor and lower than the velocity of the liquid exiting the primary motive nozzle. The same relationship with the pressures and uh, what exits is a mixture that's at a pressure somewhere in the middle. So that's kind of our second stage, or excuse me, our first stage compression. That, that occurs and is uh, essentially powered by this compressor, um, but the intention is that there's no extra energy expended by the compressor in order to provide that compression because that energy, that uh, that pressure component of, of the enthalpy of the you know, incoming liquid refrigerant, um, that, that pressure component would normally be lost, um, uh, converted into internal energy and, uh, uh, you know, internal energy ends up uh, causing flash gas and you, we lose some of the, uh, the liquid that could be carrying heat for our purpose. Uh, and it's just being circulated around and around and around just for the compressor. And in this case, I'm trying to use some of that work uh, to do some compression for that. Um, and I'm, I know it works. Uh, I don't know exactly how well it works other than I've achieved 8 to 10 PSI. Um, whether or not it's better than a system without an ejector, I don't have any comparison. But, uh, but anyway, uh, so you know, we have our first stage compression there. And uh, vapor from that stage is drawn off and goes to the compressor to finish it off. So, you know, by doing this first stage here, and even even uh, raising the suction pressure for the the rotary compressor by 10 psi, um, that you know ultimately reduces the compression ratio that the co compressor has to uh, to perform. And if you lower the compression ratio, plus work the compressor has to do uh, by having a higher suction pressure coming back to the, uh, the compressor, you know, say we're maintaining 40 PSI there, but the compressor only, you know, sees 50 PSI. Um, the uh, density of the of the suction gas being drawn into uh, the veins of the rotary compressor, it's a higher density gas. So the for each rotation of the, the compressor, there's more uh, uh, mass flow through the compressor. So it's, it's higher volumetric efficiency generally. Um, at least that's the intention. So time will tell. Uh, I'm going to change me, uh, me. Yeah, I'm going to change my uh, vacuum pump oil, and let her sit uh, on the pump for a while, and uh, draw any water that might be out. I actually flushed this coil out with water, so uh, <laughs> I knew that could be a problem. But it just takes a long time with a vacuum pump to get her out. And uh, later on this evening, I'm going to do a pressure test with this uh, ugly, ugly epoxy, and make sure everything's good to go there. And no doubt, I'll have some leaks in some of my ugly ass uh, flare fittings, but they, my god they are convenient. So Hopefully we'll be running tonight. And once I get some preliminary tests and it seems like it's good to go, I can insulate all this crap and it won't be so ugly anymore, right? So, anyway, thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you next time.